We're tracking a, a trial out of Florida, the Seminole Heights killer. It was a serial killer case, and uh, that trial is scheduled to come up sometime in the next few months, depending upon how things go. Anyhow, Seema Iyer had an opportunity to speak with Harold Schechter, who's an expert on serial killers, and talk to him about the mind of the serial killer and mentions people like Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer. Let's take a listen. From all of your research and expertise in serial killers, have you discovered that there are certain common traits that serial killers have? Yeah, well, again, it partly defi uh, depends on how one defines serial killers. You know, when the term serial killers first entered into the language, which really wasn't until the 1980s, um, it was used to describe criminals like Ted Bundy and John Wayne Gacy and Jeffrey Dahm Dahmer. Uh, and when the FBI first started profiling these people, you know, they were classic sadistic sex killers. You know, these were psychopathic personalities. That is to say, person, people who were very rational, but who possessed nothing like a conscience, no capacity for empathy, who saw other human beings, you know, merely as objects to satisfy their own perverted lusts. But then it sort of got broadened, um, to include other kinds of killers, again, who killed periodically. Um, you know, they would kill a victim and then there would be what the FBI called a cooling off period, you know, a certain hiatus uh, before their next murder. You know, this was done to distinguish them from what we now call mass murderers. Mass murderers like, you know, rampage shooters who kill a whole bunch of people at one place at one time. Do they have antisocial personality disorders in general? Yeah. Well, I think the term antisocial personality disorder has now come to be favored over the term psychopath. So, yeah, I mean, it does uh, tend to be a common denominator among many of these killers. There are certain serial killers, however, who are uh, not psychopathic or not suffering from antisocial personality disorder, but who are psychotic, schizophrenic, essentially, uh, have hallucinations, hear voices commanding them to kill, and so on and so forth. But in general, uh, the classic serial killers we think of, again, Bundy, et cetera, these were uh, examples of what is now called antisocial personality disorder. From the serial killers that you've studied, do most of them have a component of sexually assaulting their victim? Yes. Uh, again, that is a, a distinction of what used to be called lust murders. These are men, uh, generally they're men, um, who again uh, can only derive sexual pleasure from torturing and murdering helpless victims. So yes, there's a very, very distinct sexual component to their crimes. Can you, are you at all able to just list a few common traits that you have seen in serial killers? Well, again, uh, you know, if you're talking about people like Ted Bundy and John Wayne Gacy, you know, the, the, the characteristics of that type of serial killer is they are extreme sexual sadists. Uh, they are psychopathic personalities, which means that they're very rational in their behavior, but they employ their rationality for these evil ends. Uh, many of them have um, very, very, as you would imagine, dysfunctional backgrounds. Many of them have been themselves subjected to various kinds of humiliation and even torture as children. Uh, you know, they grow up associating uh, inflicting pain and exerting power over helpless victims with pleasure. In your research and studying serial killers, is there anything that you have learned that you find surprising about them? Um, well, uh, when I first started researching the subject, I found everything surprising about them. You know, you, you realize that there are these outer bounds of human behavior, you know, that, uh, you know, human beings 
at their most depraved are capable of uh, acts of savagery and brutality and cruelty. On the Seminole Heights serial killer, what did you, what do you think, what is your opinion of this person from what you've read so far? Uh, you know, there doesn't seem to be, from what I've read about him, the sexual component. But another common denominator among serial killers, again, I think it's partly a function of how they are raised, you know, because they're raised often to feel like they're nothing, like they they, they have no power, is they get a, a great deal of pleasure, a great deal of gratification from this feeling of exerting power, not only over the people they kill, but in a sense over law enforcement and over society at large. Here's one of his court appearances. I, I feel like, you know, if, if I'm in there much longer that um, my, my heart and my body won't, won't be able to, to last under what I've been enduring. Can you make any opinion of someone who's accused of this type of crime who makes those type of statements in front of a judge? It's not uncommon um, for serial killers who are incapable of feeling any empathy for other human beings to feel very sorry for themselves. When this gentleman, Mr. Donaldson, was uh, interrogated slash interviewed by the police, uh, he denied being involved. Mm -hmm. uh, the police officer asked him, do you owe these families an explanation? And he basically just didn't say anything. This is according to the transcript. He signals he's ready to leave the interview. And uh, he basically says, I don't have anything else to say. I just, I want to talk to my attorney. Mm -hmm. Can you make an assessment based on those statements to law enforcement? Well, I mean, it's, again, not uncommon for serial murderers to deny their guilt. I mean, John Wayne Gacy, you know, went to his death denying that he was guilty. Uh, you know, in, in addition to uh, their inability to empathize with other human beings, you know, these kinds of personalities often are incapable of feeling any genuine remorse. The Seminole serial killer sort of falls somewhere between the serial killer and the mass murderer. You know, he doesn't really correspond to the profile of the kinds of psychopathic sex murderers that the term serial killer was initially applied to. You know, he almost seems more, you know, closer to one of these mass shooters. Um, although, again, uh, what distinguishes him from the mass shooter is, you know, he didn't kill a bunch of people in one place at one time. So I would tend to think of him more as what, you know, we now call uh, a rampage killer or possibly a spree killer.